Channel One Talk Podcast, Episode 90, for Monday, June 25th, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Pilot Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. Quite often, when examining a particular problem, engineers will become so entrenched with the issue that the simplest fix to a problem can sometimes fall by the wayside and never even be considered. After discussing next-generation emergency services migration strategies with several of my peers and colleagues at the NINA 2012 workshop in Long Beach, California this past month, as well as the Enterprise E911 problem of getting detailed location information to public safety in real time, I've come to the conclusion that there needs to be a new, innovative, much more simplified KISS, or keep it simple stupid method, that can be applied to both problems. The root cause of the problem today, when you sift through the layers of techno babble that's out there, is that the 911 network has minimal intelligence built into it. Emergency calls are geographically contained and are routed in a hub and spoke fashion. If the origination endpoint is not in or have access to the correct hub, the caller is isolated from the correct spoke at the physical layer that connects them to the 911 center or PSAP servicing that area. That architecture creates a physical barrier that technology and the laws of physics simply cannot solve. In addition to being an isolated island in the telecom ocean, there's just no way for an originator of an emergency call to insert or attach any additional enhanced information. Next Generation 911 promises to enhance and add intelligence into the network. But what is needed right now is a way to make the existing system a little smarter. Over the past year, there's been a new service that increases both the depth and intelligence of the data surrounding an E911 caller. But instead of adding information to an architecture that clearly cannot transport that data, they've added an alternative feed to the 911 center that is today out of band of the legacy network. But tomorrow could very easily be in band. With it being out of band, it's also not handcuffed by the technology limitations imposed on 911 calls today. Now the primary function of this service is to increase the amount of intelligence that surrounds an E911 call, making the E911 call taker a little smarter. Now, for my regular readers and listeners, just bear with me for two minutes because I want to make sure the problem is clearly understood by everyone. Based on recent statistics, nearly 300 million calls each year are placed to 911 in the U.S. alone. Now, if you do the math, that works out to nearly 2,000 people just the amount of time you spent listening to this podcast so far. Unfortunately, on the vast majority of those calls, the only data or information that is delivered, or can be delivered for that matter, is a telephone number. Even the method of delivering that minimal information to the PSAP is one that is antiquated and developed nearly 30 years ago, and has little relevance to the way our average nomadic citizen communicates today, and from where. Very few in the industry will argue with those facts, and many are feverishly working on the interim solutions to fix it and ways of bridging gaps between the legacy environment that's a reality today and the next generation nirvana that we all dream about for the future. Nearly every week, headlines like new program to allow citizens to provide critical information to emergency operators dot the news. You can see my blog on www.avaya.com forward slash Fletcher for links to those articles. In one, thanks to a $43,000 grant from the state of Florida, Lake County's 911 Center will soon utilize a brand new program from a company called Rave Mobile Security that has been appropriately named Smart 911. So what is Smart 911? Well, basically it's a nationwide database that allows anyone with access to the internet to set up a Smart 911 profile at no cost. That profile is then coordinated with your telephone number that the 911 center gets when you call 911, and then the information you've made available in your profile is made available to public safety. Greg Holcomb, the Lake County 911 coordinator, explained, quote, there's medical information that could be allergies or the medicine someone that is on, in addition to details about you or your family that a dispatcher otherwise wouldn't have, unquote. Think of Facebook or LinkedIn, but instead of likes and links, your profile includes life-saving information 
The type of information that can be stored is practically unlimited and can include codes to enter a gated community, or you can even upload your office's building plans that give first responders details about electrical panels, water mains, or fire hydrants. Today, that valuable additional data can be relayed to first responders over the radio system or even to an in-vehicle mobile data terminal or computer. The Smart 911 profile also allows the user to upload photographs. Valuable information, such as a photo, can assist making an Amber Alert or missing adult event more manageable to more people. In Lake County, Florida, the new Smart 911 system will be up and running in August. Sign-up, of course, is voluntary but recommended by local authorities. In Collier County, Florida, the same solution is being rolled out and residents will also be able to take advantage of the Smart 911 network. And information about themselves or even their pets will be held in the database. Now, while other states have it in some counties, Arkansas will be making it available to residents statewide after a successful pilot program in Benton and Pulaski counties. Now, since nothing is ever free, what is the cost of this new technology? Well, to the public users, there's never any cost to create and enter your profile. And in Arkansas, even the PSAPs get a free ride as the state legislature has authorized $1 million for the startup costs. Now, although that may seem expensive, it's actually significantly less money than traditional alley any services and camera trunks provided by the LEC that PSAPs need to buy today. Let's do the math. If a single county-wide 911 center had, let's say, 20 call takers and connectivity to two selective routers for redundancy with 25 trunks each, that would be a total of 50 camera circuits. Now, if those camera circuits cost only $1,000 a piece each month, which would be a bargain, that would equal to $50,000 monthly just for the access line. Over a year, that adds up to $600,000 just for that single center. If a state had only 10 of those centers, the access charges would be over $6 million annually. And you thought you had a big phone bill. Now keep in mind, those estimates are for the access lines only. On top of those numbers, there are the charges for actually accessing the Annie Alley database and the overhead costs for administration. Clearly, you can see that the incentive for moving to this new technology and the network that will support it is the cost savings, which are tremendous. Fifteen years ago, long-distance calls were mileage-based and the money businesses spent on telecom was skyrocketing. Voice over IP and IP technology have revolutionized the way that we communicate and the cost of that communication. So how do we fix the E911 problem today? Well, maybe it's already fixed and we just need to implement it. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency?